Okay, this is a re review of a quiz question that we did in class earlier today. We have three objects connected to a pulley uh, to form an Atwoods machine. Um, uh, I've included some things already on the screen. Um, object A has a mass of 10 kilograms, B 20 kilograms, C 50 kilograms. Um, I've arranged A and B on one side and C on the other side. It doesn't matter if uh, A uh, and B are drawn the way I have them or if you swap their positions. Uh, the question in class called for A and B to be on one side, however. If you do swap them, then you will change the value of T1 um, because A will be at the bottom of the system. A um, couple of things uh, before we begin. Uh, since you have 50 kilograms on the right side, um, C, in other words, what will happen, um, that 50 kilograms will pull on the 30 kilograms on the left side. So we will end up having the pulley move in a clockwise fashion. So that's how we're going to define the positive direction. On the left side here, that'll be positive, And on the right side, that will be positive. So I have the free body diagrams already drawn. Let's just review each one of these one at a time. And I'm also going to make some comments on some of the things that I saw in the quiz. So uh, B, for example, um, has two forces acting on it. It has its weight pulling down. Um, many people in class have been writing um, uh, the downward force is FG. I recommend that from now on, rather than writing FG, um, let's uh, write down exactly what FG is equal to. In this case, FG for object B is equal to MB times G, G acceleration due to gravity. Um, the uh, string holding object B is pulling upwards. We're going to call that T1. So just like in the overall diagram, this has positive moving in that direction. And that's going to be important when we do the Newton's second law statement. Um, now object A has three forces acting on it. Uh, it has its weight pulling down. Um, that would be MAG. And it has T1 pulling it down also. Um, now I, I want to emphasize here that T1 is a contact force. And it is the contact force that's pulling down on A. The weight of object B is not pulling down on A. It's the string pulling it down. Now later you'll see that the string, the tension in the string happens to be equal to the weight of B, but it's a good practice to just stick to the contact force. So again, it's T1 pulling down on A. Now the upward force is T2. Um, we can say T2 or we can just call this T because T2 is equal to uh, T3 as depicted in the original diagram. Okay, now object C, we have its weight pulling down, so that's MCG, and the upward force is going to be tension T. Um, now the reason tension um, 2 is equal to tension 3, and therefore equal just to T, is because you have the same string connecting A and C. It's one string. Um, so the tension is always going to be uh, the same throughout in a single string. Okay, so let's write down the Newton's uh, law statements. Uh, we know in general um, the sum of the forces is equal to MA. So we're going to actually apply that three times, one for each of the objects. So for object B, uh, we see that T1 is in the positive direction, minus MBG downward, and that's equal to MBA. Uh, we also see that uh, uh, for the second object, we have uh, T going upward and uh, minus MAG 
minus t1 is equal to m a a subscript a times the acceleration. And for c, we have, um, no, I guess I, I need to emphasize here the directions like that. Okay, good. So we have the directions noted. So for c, we have mcg minus t is equal to mc a. Good. Okay, so those are the three Newton's law, second law statements. And what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to add them up. So add all three equations, put a big plus here. And as I can see when I add them, that will cancel and that will cancel. So in the end, what I'm going to have is MCG minus MBG minus MAG is equal to MBA plus uh, MAA plus MCA. Uh, now I can factor this. Um, so I'm going to rearrange this uh, in alphabetical order. So if I factor out the G, I'll have G times uh, MC minus MA minus MB. So just rearrange the A and B. Is equal to A times MA plus MB plus MC. And I just place the M's in alphabetical order there. So that means that A is equal to uh, MC minus MA minus MB divided by MA plus MB plus MC. Okay, so that's the formula that you would use to figure out acceleration. And I'm pretty sure that all my students uh, earlier today uh, got this part correct. Okay, so yay, students. Uh, so we're just going to plug in the numbers now. Uh, oh, I forgot something I just noticed. I didn't put in the G. So there's a big, there's a G right there. Okay. Hmm, that is a G, kind of. Okay, better. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers. Uh, A is going to be equal to uh, 50 minus 10 minus 20, parentheses, divided by uh, 10 plus 20 plus 50. And we'll multiply that by 9.8 or 9.81 if you like. Uh, so A is going to be equal to, do the math, and you should get 2.45 meters per second squared. Good. Okay, great. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, calculating uh, the tensions. And we have two tensions to calculate, uh, T1 and T. Uh, now, this th there's a couple of problems that I saw in class, and this is why I decided to make this video, just to kind of help you out in uh, discussing these things. Um, some, some of you know who you are because I sent you an email earlier today. Okay, so this is especially for you. So let's look at solving for T1, and I think what I'm going to do is use uh, what would be the easiest equation, probably this one right here. Okay, I'll use that one for solving for T1. Seems very easily, yeah, easy to do. So uh, we have, let's do it right here. T1 minus MBG is equal to MBA. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers. Um, and I'm going to mention uh, some of the errors that I saw earlier today. So T1 minus MB, which is 20 times 9.8. Okay, not negative 9.8, but 
Why not negative 9.8? Well, we already took care of the negative right here. We already said that 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 uh, that MB is going downwards. So we already took care of the direction. So we don't want to say it twice because then what will end up happening is that will end up being T1 plus 20 times 9.8. It's T1 minus 20 times 9.8. Okay. So again, emphasize where it, whenever you're using uh, G in Newton's second law, we always write 9.8. Uh, not negative 9.8 like we do with the kinematic equations. The reason we do that is because the uh, we take care of the signage when we set up the equations. Okay, so let me finish here. And this is times 20. And this brings us to the next error that I saw that was common. It's 20 times the acceleration of object B. And since the entire system is accelerating, we already calculated it, it's accelerating at 2.45. So if you do the math, uh, you should end up getting, um, I believe it's 245. So T1 is equal to 245 Newtons. Good, so that's the first calculation. Now, to calculate uh, T, the tension in the other rope, we expect that that number is going to be a larger number. Uh, why? Well, T1 is smaller because T1 is only supporting object B, whereas um, uh, the other string above it, uh, T2, T3, uh, is supporting, on one side it's supporting C, and on the other side it's supporting both A and B. Therefore, I know that that has to be a larger number. So I can use um, uh, probably the equation um, right here, this one, uh, that I used for uh, or developed for object C. That's probably the easiest one to write down. So let's do that. So that would be MCG minus T is equal to MCA. Plug in the numbers, 50 times 9.8, remember. Okay, not negative 9.8, 9.8, because we have the minus over there. We've, we've talked about that already. T is equal to 50 times 2.45. Okay, not zero. It's 2.45 because the entire system we see, uh, we, we calculated to be 2.45. Okay, do all the math. T is equal to... 367.5 newtons. Okay, and we are done. Okay, good luck on tomorrow's quiz.